Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today our artistic journey brings us to color profiles and a little bit color calibration and how to get better colors in your photography. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that, let's get started right away. So you probably have heard about sRGB ICE 61966-2. 2.1. This is actually the name of a color profile. Not very intuitive, but very important to remember. So how do they work? Where can you actually find them? So to get into a little bit of the basics, your computer normally consists, of course, you have your hardware, but then you have your operation system, of course, which is Mac or Linux, Windows, iOS, Android, other systems that are out there. What is that? What does that do? So operating system basically is the dolmetcher, the translator between the software and the hardware. So the operation system tells the hardware what you want it to do. So that means in your computer is a graphics card that renders or calculates the picture and puts it out to your screen where you can actually see it with your eyes because the rest is just data that you can not really see with your eyes. You have to set that up the right way because otherwise, for example, when you open up Affinity Photo and you have the background of a document and the background should be white, but it looks yellow, that means that your software and your operating system are using different color profiles. So on Windows, I can show you real quick where to find that. On the other systems, you probably have to Google that. I'm sorry for that. So in Windows, go down to your search down here and you enter display like this and display settings pop up. You can see here, I have two screens now. So I updated my hardware a little bit for live streaming. Anyways, now let's not talk about that. Scroll down on these settings down here. You can see advanced display settings. Click on that and this window opens up and here it says display adapter properties. The display adapter is your graphics card. So click on that and this opens up and this is directly the driver for your graphics card. You can see I'm using a GeForce uh -huh. and here it says color management. Click on that. You have to click again on color management for some reason. So click on that again. And then here it says device display one. Uh -huh. And then I have also another display display two. And here, down here, it says the ICC profile. That's your color profile. ICC profile. You can see again here sRGB. <laughs> so this is the one that I'm using. If you want to change it, you go to advanced. And here you can see you can change the different color profiles that you want to use with your hardware. Okay, so this is how you do it in the operating system. In this case, in Windows 10. Good. Let's close this down. Then you have another color profile in your software. So you have to set it up in the software per software. Of course, if you're using different programs, go into these programs and try to find where to adjust the color profile. The reason for that is, of course, because you might want the hardware to use a specific color profile, but then you want to simulate another profile in your software to see how that would look. So uh, this is why the hardware, uh, the, sorry, the software to adjust your images like Affinity Photo can use another color profile than your heart or like operation system does. So you go to edit and then you go to preferences and here it says color already. And here you can see you have different color profiles for RGB, 32-bit RGB, CMYK, Grayscale, Lab. And then you also have the rendering intent. This is more complicated, so I'm not going to go into that. And probably you don't want to change that if you're like a beginner. If you're more advanced, read that up on the internet. There's a lot of information about all these kind of settings, what they do, what they mean. Right now, the only thing that's interesting for us is that we use the same color profiles in different softwares and also in the operation system. So the files look the same on different softwares that we're using, like Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, maybe Lightroom, Photoshop, Luminar, all these kind of things. So of course, you can also have a color profile embedded in your file. 
This is also important because you want, for example, if you want to send out the file to someone else or to a print company, you want to have color profile embedded in there. You can save it uh, with the file. You can also adjust the color profile when you open it up. So you go to document and here it says convert format and ICC profile. As you can see here, the format is, for example, RGB, grayscale, CMYK lab. And below that you have the profile. You can select here from different profiles that you have installed on your computer. Here you can see I'm also using sRGB profile. The reason why I'm using this on all of my settings uh, from the operation system to the software to the file is because most of the files or almost all of the files that I create are for screen use. Then we come to the screens. You can, of course, adjust your screen. And this is also, of course, influencing how a picture is displayed. So you can go into the menu of your screen and there you can set up the vibrance and the contrast and also they have pre-made profiles for movies, for gaming, for photos, for all these kind of things. Um, they change how the pictures are looking on your screen. There is no true way of color will be displayed by a device, which is a bit strange when you think about it because the digital files, they have a super exact and precise way to save the information of the color. But then when you output it, it's variation throughout the different devices and hardware and materials and all these kind of things. But that makes sense because reality isn't digital. Reality is analog. So that means we have a lot of different substances and materials and also daylight situations, all these kind of things that have a big influence on how pictures look. And also, of course, purposes and how you personally perceive colors. For example, if you want to adjust something, you probably want to have a very neutral setting on your screen. But then if you want to watch a movie, you don't want to have neutral settings. You want a really cool, powerful settings that make the movie look wow and not just neutral and boring. And there is the big question, should you calibrate? Can you calibrate? Does it make any sense to calibrate? Well, um, you can buy calibration devices. Uh, the one thing I want to tell you, and I really reconfirmed this with a friend of mine. He's working for a newspaper as a designer and a photographer. I was asking him, do you do that? Do you need that? How is it used professionally in your profession? And he said, well, you can technically use it, but he wouldn't suggest it for hobbyists because on one hand, it's kind of complicated um, to use it actually. Of course, just sticking the device on there is easy, but then you need to know what to do with that information. And the thing is color calibration only makes sense when you have a really good monitor or screen that is actually made to be calibrated and also has this kind of guard on top of it. Because as you know, with your cell phone, with your iPad, if you go outside, suddenly the picture looks different than inside. If you look at the picture through the, out the day on midday, it looks different when you look at it on midnight where it's nice and dark around you. So all these kind of things have an influence. So you usually have this kind of guard that kind of protects it from direct sunlight and you can see the contrast and the color better on your screen um, and of course you should turn off all kinds of other settings and automated settings because a lot of consumer screens that you can buy will adjust to the daylight that is falling or to the light situation that's surrounding the screen which of course will mess up your color calibration you have to ask yourself to what do I calibrate it to? Do you calibrate it to the printer on your desk? Do you calibrate it to the print company where you send your files to print them as flyers or as a photo book, stuff like that? So that's a bit complicated uh, to set up. And often you need a uh, uh, test prints also to do. And he said, okay, if you do this, all of this, you are already professional and you probably know how to use that. And if you don't order test prints, stuff like that, it doesn't have that huge of an influence. It's more like if you want to be really precise about color. So I want to give you an alternative that everyone can do and that's easy and you don't need a really expensive screen for that uh, that you can calibrate. Um, so I want to suggest two things to you that you should and could do. One of is one of which is um, to get one of these test sets here. These are 
um, as you can see you have different colors here you have different gray values and stuff like that on here and this is a test card and this test card you can hold it next to the subject you're photographing then take a picture and then of course take the picture without the test card and then afterwards you have the test card in your hand and you can see the colors on your screen and sometimes these test cards even come with the software that helps you afterwards adjust the picture so the photos on the test card are the same in the file as on the test card on the physical test card regardless of what you see on your screen watch some videos read some material on how to actually use these cards for example one mistake is to have it in the wrong angle so there's reflection on the card so the black is not actually black because some of the uh, light is going reflected and it's actually using it's looking gray so the information is kind of useless the other advice is um always call the printing company where you send your files if you want to have them printed professionally and ask them what color profile should i use with your printing company because they of course have calibrated their tools and they probably have a profile uh, that you can download if it's a good company uh, and install on your computer they will help you do that and um uh, give you support on how to prepare the files they also probably have a service that you have to pay a little bit for so they prove them for you so that's also a good service to have and the other thing and this is a very important thing this no device can do that for you is that you train your eyes and you train your work process the test prints if you have a printer at home if the main thing you're doing is printing at home with the desktop printer you have sitting next to you on the test uh, on the desk make test prints make adjustments on your screen see what the difference is and find out how you have to calibrate your pictures how you have to do the adjustments so you get the results you want to have and this is something that you can feel regardless of what you see on the screen regardless of all these other kinds of settings it's more about you feeling your artistic senses do the colors look good also look at the works of other artists to get a feeling for color and contrast how they are used how they are perceived because this is also an important thing besides all the hardware besides all the software besides all the calibration you have a brain and your brain is interpreting the color for you it's telling you this is this color this is that color and this might not be true in reality so for example if you have a big shape with a color and next to it a very thin shape with the same color they might not look the same color so you have to make the thin shape a little bit darker so they look the same so your brain is tricking you it's adjusting the things that you see with your eyes and you have to train that you have to learn that through the process and together with your hardware to find out how it works best and then i would say the best artists they work with their senses to get the results they want because they are trained their senses and they have also trained to work with the hard way hardware that they are used to and you want to probably select one print shop one print company that you feel comfortable with and then work with them over a longer time so you also over time learn how the results of them look and how you have to adjust the picture so you get the right results that just the absolute technical values alone don't give you perfect results they just help you to get there but you have to do the last step okay Good light situation is always important and learn to use your camera. That's also important uh, for the light balance, what you have to do in different light situations, how to use your flash. All these kind of things have a huge impact on how the colors look. If you don't have a good picture, nothing of that really will help you turn it into a good looking picture. But what we actually were talking about today is the color profiles. So check in your operation system in your software and in your file that you're using the same color profiles so that you get the picture and the colors that you're actually looking for and that they don't change between the different softwares on the same device but i have to warn you this is the last thing i'm saying in this video they will always look different on different devices so even if you super extra calibrate your pictures and your monitor and then you go over to a friend to show the slideshow picture is going to look different because their television their screen their tablet 
is not going to be calibrated your way. It's probably not calibrated at all. <laughs> okay, I hope this was somehow helpful to you a little bit. Uh, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you like it. Uh, maybe share the video and I hope we see us in the next video in the next step of our artistic journey. I wish you a good day. I wish you a good night. Bye.